Hello, YouTube. This is my uh, network attached storage drive, or NAS for short. If you don't know what a NAS is, it's basically just an external hard drive that's attached to the network. So you can see back here, it has a LAN, LAN port uh, for Ethernet, and you could just attach it to a router and access the data inside from various different computers or devices or even the TV. Um, this particular one is the DS213J. I've had this for about three years now. This is a Synology. Uh, the company Synology makes this one. I've had it for about three years. They've released a lot of newer stuff now. Um, but I've been using this a lot and it's very important to me actually. Almost everything I do on my network involves this drive one way or another. I have recently been making a lot of networking, home networking related videos. Um, and I've talked a lot about routers and switches and how to wire everything together, but I haven't talked about the NAS. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a few videos about this as well. Uh, this one video that you're watching now is just an introduction video, but I'll definitely get into more detail about how I use this drive and the different things I could do. So I literally store everything on this drive, uh, from videos to music to documents to my projects. Um, pretty much everything I, I own that's data is on this drive. And I'm able to access it from anywhere in my home, uh, from the TV, from tablets, from my phone. Also through the internet as well, I could access this drive over my phone if I'm out somewhere. So one of the examples for that I could give you is Let's say I'm out somewhere and a friend calls me and wants a specific document from me that uh, I have on this drive. All I have to do is pull out my phone, uh, get to the drive through my phone, get the document I want, and just email it to him. So without having to carry everything on my phone, is that's one example of how I use this. I also use this as my media server. So it could serve things like uh, video, music, and photos to various devices in the house. So one good example is, say you have guests over and you recently went on a trip and you've recorded a lot of video and took a lot of photos. And so you have a group of people that you want to show these, these photos and videos to. All you have to do is turn on the TV, connect to the drive, and you could play back these videos and photos uh, on the big screen and everyone could see them all at the same time. Another thing I'd like to do with this drive is to download things. I grew up at a time where everyone was downloading things and there wasn't really much streaming going on. So I'm the type of person that actually likes to store all my stuff in my own drive and outside of the cloud. So I have a lot of music that I've accumulated over the years and a lot of video. Uh, they have a app called DSGet and it's a really nice app. It allows you to search for things online uh, that you would want to download. And it allows you to just download it anywhere from the internet that you could connect to this drive. So you don't have to use your data plan to download things. You just connect to the drive from home and request things to get downloaded while you're away. So an example that I could give you is say you're at work and a coworker recommends a specific movie that they would like you to watch. Uh, so what you do is you just pull out the phone, open DSGet, search for it, find it, and just start downloading it right there on the spot. And by the time the workday is over and you return home, your download is finished and it's in this drive. And all you have to do is turn on the TV, navigate to that file and just play it. It can't get any simpler than that. You don't need to worry about flash drives or CD-ROMs or burning things. All you have to do is just download it, turn on the TV and watch it. Simple as that. Another thing I use this NAS4 is software development and software projects that I work on at home. And it's really nice because it comes with a lot of different options. Uh, it could be a Git server. It could be a web server. Um, there's a lot of different server-related applications uh, that you could install on this. And it just makes everything easy to work on. Uh, so I could store my source code on there. I could use the Git server to manage my source code or even let others contribute and I could work on projects with friends so forth over the internet. It's also a web server 
And so if let's say I'm building a website and I could just go in and use this to view the website I'm building as I work on it. Since it's small and it also goes to sleep when it's not being used, it's very efficient. It's always on, but it's most of the time asleep when I'm not using it. So yeah, I've had this for about three years now. It actually had a lot of dust buildup in it and I was blasting it off just, just now before this video recording. Uh, I was blasting all, all the dust for, with my compressor. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and show you what it looks like inside. So it's just these two screws here. And then you get to pull it apart like this. And actually when you buy this drive, it does not come with the hard drives. So you have to do this yourself. You have to, after buying it, you have to open it up like I just did and install two hard drives inside. So I got a couple of hard drives in there. They're three terabytes each. I believe the newer model that's out now can take about 12 terabyte maximum. Whereas this one can take four terabytes maximum per drive. The way I'm using this and the way I would recommend everybody to use it is drive mirroring. So basically I'm mirroring these two drives together or another way is described as RAID 1. And what that does is all my data that's that I've stored in this device is duplicated over these two drives, which means that it's always safe. If one of the drives ever fail, and believe me, I've had drives fail on me before, uh, you will be safe because the other drive has the same exact data copied over it. And all you have to do is disconnect it, open it like I just did, take out the drive that failed. It tells you in the front which one was failed through the LED light. And you just have to replace that drive with uh, another drive, either the same size or more. And then it'll just copy over the contents automatically once you turn it back on to the drive, the, to the new drive. And so your data is always duplicated. So if at, in any case, when one of the drives fail, all you have to do is just remove it, replace it, and none of your data ever gets lost. So what I like most about this device is the software. Um, they always keep it up to date. It has a lot of different features. It's very easy to use. They have various different apps that you could use to access this drive in various different ways. And you could do a lot of different things with this drive. And I've been using it hardly to its fullest potential because there's just too much stuff it could do. And this was just an introduction video. I plan to release much more videos about the technical side of things. Um, how I have it set up on my network, how I have my computer configured to interface with it and, and so forth. So I'm going to release quite a few new videos related to this drive. But if you guys have any suggestions or if you guys want to see something specific about this drive, leave a comment and I'll try to include that in the next videos. Well, thank you for watching.